In this macro photography tutorial, we're shooting beetles, taxidermied beetles that you can get easily online and shoot at home for some really uh, beautiful and colorful macro shots of insects. Stick around, and I'll show you exactly how it's done. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and welcome back to another macro photography tutorial where today we're shooting insects indoors. And we're doing that because these ones are uh, taxidermied, so they've been preserved, uh, which is really handy for shooting them at home indoors in a controlled environment and taking your time to get the shots that you want. We've ordered these insects online, we got them on eBay, but they actually came from um, what looks to be a, a professional collector's website called uh, taxidermyartistry.co.uk. All sorts of different insects and things by the looks of it. I'll put a link to them down in the description um, because they have come beautifully packaged and preserved ready to shoot, uh, although uh, you do need to cut them out of a, a very um, secure little uh, <laughs> um, wrapping here that's all uh, stapled in place. So whether or not you can get them out of there in one piece is another question, but they're certainly very well packaged and preserved. So uh, do recommend those guys. Um, but for now, let's take a look at our insects for today. So then guys, check out these two little insects that we've got here. Um, just for scale, here's the size of my camera. So they are quite small. And this is the packaging that I was talking about. Uh, you'll see that they're all stapled in place here with uh, a sort of hard plastic cover over the top of them. So you will have to unpick all of those staples to get at the insect, but I've managed it just fine without breaking this one. Uh, and I think these are beetles. So I'm not entirely sure uh, the species name of these beetles. Uh, it's not come with any of the information or anything like that. Uh, I probably should have made a note of what they were on the uh, on the eBay listing. Um, but if you do know what these beetles are actually called, do let us know down in the comments because I'm sure a few people will be interested in the exact scientific names of these guys. But I'm interested in capturing some of that beautiful color on the wings and getting up really, really close to capture the detail on the bodies, the antennae, and uh, just the entire insect if possible. The first image that I want to get is a nice uh, overview image from the top, a nice scientific shot of the wingspan of these uh, flying beetles, and hopefully we can do that color justice using our lighting. Lighting is going to be really important for capturing the detail and the color on these insects. And because they are uh, now taxidermied, uh, you can keep your lighting nice and controlled in an indoor environment and take your time to build your shot without any worry of them flying or scurrying away. So I'm going to be using the Adapt Look Studio to get some nice controlled lighting. I've got a starter pack here. I'll be opening this up, taking a look at what's inside and placing my lighting down in the exact places that I need it to light up my insects. I'm going to set up my first shot with my camera looking down on the top of my insect. So check it out, I've brought my camera up onto the top of my table uh, with my tripod actually sat up on the table so that I can get a direct view down onto my insect. Uh, but you'll notice that apart from the, uh, the focus peaking uh, red that is coming through here, um, that we've not got the best uh, colors coming through. Everything's a little bit grayish, a little bit dreary, um, and our settings aren't great either. We've got um, one one hundredth of a second and ISO 6400, if you can see this upside down, um, and we're on F11 on the uh, the aperture so not great settings and i do want to bring in a little bit of lighting to make those colors pop and bring that iso down a little bit if we can so with some lighting introduced you can now see that uh, things have changed things are looking much much nicer and much more colorful uh, our iso has also come down to a more reasonable level as well uh, and that's because i've opened up that adapt looks studio uh, starter pack box and air <laughs> we had everything that we needed in this box but it's now all over here of course i've set up another little mini tripod underneath my main tripod with two white lighting arms uh, and two diffusers which are now sat uh, nice and evenly either side of my insect and just lighting it up really really uh, evenly from 
either side. Nice, soft, diffused white light. And uh, if you don't want to, um, to balance these by uh, placing them in the same place, you can also balance them by changing the brightness of each of the individual lights. So this is a really, really handy way to get that really highly controllable light. Uh, because each of these arms is flexible, you can place it exactly where you need it to be for your particular subject. In this case, I want them to be uh, evenly spread over each of these wings to really bring out that color. When it comes to actually taking my stills, I'm going to be using a remote shutter release cable just to keep everything as still as possible. There's a really easy demonstration to show you why that's so important when you're going for nice, sharp, precision shots like these. So what I've done here is I've gone into my focus magnifier. All of that red that you can see there is the camera's focus peaking, telling me which parts of the image are in focus. So if I change the focus, you'll see all of that red go away and it'll come back when uh, the sharpest parts of the image are then back in focus. But you'll notice as I did that, there's a huge amount of shake just as I touch the camera. So if I go and uh, try and press the shutter button, you'll see that there's actually a huge amount of camera shake going on right as I go and press the button. That's where my uh, shutter release cable comes in because I can stand back over here, press my shutter release cable without wobbling the camera at all. Shutter release cables like this are really cheap and they do improve your shots when you're working in a, uh, in a studio environment like this and you have the time to spend to uh, get everything set up. Uh, you don't want any camera shake at all, especially if you're shooting at relatively slow shutter speeds like I am, one one hundredth of a second, you can definitely still get some camera shake uh, in your shots at that speed especially if you're shooting at really high magnification. The more magnification you've got, obviously all of those movements are going to be hugely exaggerated. So I want to try and keep everything as still as possible. Now, speaking of high magnification, I think it's time to get a little bit closer to our insects and try and get a different angle. So check it out guys, I've moved my uh, tripod down onto the floor and I'm now trying to get a shot super close up of the wing of one of my bugs. Um, but I'm actually lighting this from behind. So you can see that I've got my, uh, my bug propped up against the diffuser just here, using the diffuser as a bit of a backdrop, lighting from behind to bring all of that detail out on the wing. And I will also notice that I've got a, um, a focus stacking rail attached here so that I can move my camera in and out and do a little bit of focus stacking to try and get this as sharp as possible. Now I've been adjusting this setup uh, round to, uh, to get shots of the, uh, the faces of the bugs, the underside, the wings, uh, using both uh, one and two lighting arms together to try and bring out as much of that color, detail and structure as possible. For those of you that uh, know the channel and watch, uh, watch these uh, tutorials fairly often, you'll probably know that I'm not a big fan of bugs, um, but I've overcome that uh, dislike and fear to, uh, to be, well, touching these guys, um, but they're actually really, really well preserved, really, really um, sturdy, actually, to, uh, to be able to manhandle them a little bit and get them into various different positions, which is really, really great for exploring the, uh, the body, the colors, the structure, the wings. Um, we can get all sorts of different angles, including ones from the front, so we can get their, their eyes and uh, like you just saw, ones from um, shot on lit from behind. So I've been turning them upside down, right way round and using my reverse lens setup to get a lot of magnification. So for those of you that haven't seen a reversed lens setup before, this is a really cheap and effective way of getting a lot of magnification without the need for uh, a dedicated macro lens. So let me walk you through very quickly what we're doing here. We've got the camera here, obviously this is a Sony a7 III, um, but all of these lenses are actually made for Nikon. So we've got a uh, Nikon to Sony adapter just here, that's this little piece. Um, you don't necessarily need that if you buy all of the correct lenses for the correct camera manufacturers. Next we've got some adjustable extension 
suspension tubes here. The adjustableness of them uh, comes in various different ways. Usually uh, it's a set so that you can add and remove pieces to make more or less extension. Ours just screw and unscrew like this to get more or less magnification. On the front of that, we've got this little silver ring, which is a reversing ring. And the way that that works is you take a regular old, uh, I think this is a 50 millimeter lens. It's very, very old. It's a manual lens with manual aperture. And you screw the front of this lens backwards onto the front of those, um, those reversing rings. So uh, the back of the lens actually becomes the front. So you can see there, this is where you'd usually attach the camera. This is changing that 50 millimeter uh, lens into a macro lens. So where it would usually make big things small to fit onto your uh, camera sensor, we're now making small things bigger to fit onto your camera sensor. Now you might have to uh, fix open the aperture um, in various different ways. I've just stuck some blue tack on here so that we can still use our manual aperture ring, but that will depend on the type of lens that you're using. And all of this together is a really effective way to get a lot of magnification, as you've seen with our insects. Despite being a little apprehensive about uh, shooting these insects today, it's actually been a really good shoot. I've been uh, touching them and moving them around with no problems at all. So if you've got a stronger stomach than me or really love insects, then you'll have absolutely no problem. Uh, and they are surprisingly robust. You can move them around. I've not managed to break mine today. So that's saying something. Um, and obviously all of this is uh, preferable if you can have live insects and go out and find these things out in the wild. Um, but just finding exotic specimens like this out in the uh, UK fields without knowing where to look would be a challenge in itself. And then getting the kinds of photos that we've got today in a, an uncontrolled environment would simply be impossible. Uh, you may we would get one or two of these shots and then the insect flies away. The focus stacking would be very, very difficult with the bug moving around. And if it's on some plants, any little breeze would move the, uh, move the shot and ruin your focus stack. So having everything in a controlled environment is obviously preferable for your photography, if not uh, preferable for the, uh, the live and dead bug debate. So uh, I would recommend going and grabbing some taxidermied insects if you have the stomach for it and the inclination. Um, they are fairly cheap and you can find them on eBay or websites like the one I mentioned earlier, which again is linked down in the description. I'd like to know from you guys what you think to these bugs today. And of course, if you do know the names of these two particular insects, do let me know in the comments. For now, that is all that I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.